Imagine waking up one morning to find that a loved one has vanished without a trace, leaving behind only a trail of unanswered questions and a desperate search for closure. This is the reality for the family of Jennifer Cassie, a young woman whose mysterious disappearance has captivated the nation for over a decade, sparking a relentless hunt for the truth. Leave her in a safe place. You leave. Call, call, call and say where she is. We just don't care. We want her back. Our, our family is aching. Our family is aching. Why should we care about the disappearance of Jennifer Cassie? Because it highlights the devastating impact that one missing person can have on a community and the ripple effect it can have on the lives of those left behind. Behind every missing person case, a family is still searching for answers and a community still searching for justice. What happened to Jennifer Cassie? This question has puzzled investigators, family, and friends for over a decade. Her case has been marked by twists and turns, from the discovery of her abandoned car to the numerous leads pursued by law enforcement. Despite the tireless efforts for answers, the truth about what happened to Jennifer remains shrouded in mystery. With new discoveries and evidence still being uncovered, the search for answers continues, and the hope of finding out what happened to her never fades away. I, I don't know how to reconcile in my own head that we may never have an answer. Before her disappearance, Jennifer Cassie lived an active and fulfilling life. As a successful young professional working as a financial analyst, she had a bright future ahead of her. Orlando, Florida, was the home of this 24-year-old, where she was born and raised. Jennifer Cassie grew up in Tampa and graduated from Gaither High School. She graduated from the University of Central Florida with a degree in business administration. Cassie spent her free time with her close-knit family and friends. Her outgoing and friendly personality made her a beloved companion. Her responsible and ambitious nature earned her the respect of those around her. Jennifer had a long-term relationship with her childhood friend, and they enjoyed exploring the world together. Recently returning from a Caribbean trip, she had a passion for travel. Her love for sports was evident, for Cassie was an avid fan of the Orlando Magic basketball team. She also made sure to stay in shape by having a regular workout routine. In all aspects of her life, Jennifer was a responsible and reliable person who always kept in touch with her loved ones. Jennifer, we just want you to know we love you. We're doing everything, everything we can to find you. One week before Jennifer Cassie disappeared, she took a weekend trip to Street Croy with her boyfriend, Rob Allen. On the night before her disappearance, Jennifer returned from work and spoke with her father, mother, and friend Lauren in the evening. Her phone records show she was talking with Rob, her boyfriend, at 9.57 p.m., ending the call with a good night. Rob Allen, who lived in Neft, Lauderdale, three hours away from Orlando, where Jennifer lived alone in a condominium at Mosaic at Melinia. On the morning of January 24, 2006, Cassie failed to report to her job. As a finance manager at Central Florida Investments, a well-known timeshare company. It's not the type of girl that would go more than two hours without talking to somebody, whether it was her mom on the phone or a boyfriend or her dad. Jennifer's family contacted the Orlando police to report her missing, which was initially treated as a runaway. The Orlando Police Department later launched a full-scale investigation to find her. An investigation of the condo showed that there were no signs of a struggle or forced entry. Notably, the shower was wet, her contacts were missing, and her pajamas were on the bathroom floor. The front door had also been locked. Her black Chevy Malibu car was found abandoned at Huntington on the Green Condominium Complex. This high crime area is about one mile from her home near the mall at Melinia. The police scored through surveillance footage from the parking lot where her car was found, hoping to find any clues. They also searched the surrounding areas, but no leads were found. 
As the hours turned into days, the search for Jennifer intensified. The police said Cassie disappeared between 10 p.m. on January 23, 2006, and 8 a.m. on January 24, 2006. The police interviewed everyone who had contact with Jennifer in the days leading up to her disappearance, including her friends, family, and co-workers. They also checked her phone and internet records, looking for clues that could lead them to her whereabouts. And he, he told me, he's like, I think we have a real abduction here. And I, I shared the technology that MBI was capable of providing and the assistance, and we started down that path. As the investigation progressed, the police looked into potential suspects, including anyone with a prior criminal record or known connections to Jennifer. They investigated her boyfriend and her immediate family, but found no evidence of any involvement in her disappearance. The police have also taken polygraph tests of her parents five times and the people closest to her. They also reviewed alibis, but could not find any extra evidence or withholding information. The police checked Jennifer's and her co-workers' emails and also did a complete analysis of her hard disk. The authorities also searched several areas, including nearby lakes and retention ponds for any signs of Jennifer. However, the searches did not yield any results. The police scored through surveillance footage from the parking lot where her car was found, hoping to find any clues. They also searched the surrounding areas, but no leads were found. As the hours turned into days, the search for Jennifer intensified. The police said Cassie disappeared between 10 p.m. on January 23, 2006, and 8 a.m. on January 24, 2006. The police also uncovered surveillance video at that apartment complex, showing an unknown person parking Cassie's car near the pool area at 12 noon on January 24. The person of interest, believed to be male and dressed in workman's clothes, has never been identified. In every image captured by the surveillance camera, the person's face is obscured by the black bars of the fence. Within 24 hours, the Orlando Police Department employed NASA to enhance the images, but had little success. The FBI estimated the person to be between 5 foot 3 and 5 foot 5, with notably large feet for his height. Almost three years after Jennifer Cassie's disappearance, Detective Wright decided to take a fresh look at the case and interviewed people on audio tape. One of the people he spoke to was a former housekeeper at Jennifer's condo complex. When he showed the woman the security camera photo of the unidentified person, she told him it resembled a man she knew from the complex known as Chino because of his hair, clothing, and the way he walked. This was the first time Wright had ever heard of Chino. We went and contacted that person, and the person thought initially it was someone else. But when she looked at it, she said, that looks, that's Chino, that's not the other person who she suspected. And, uh, and at that point I said, well, what's a Chino? I don't know who Chino Detective is. Detective Wright learned Chino used to live in another building at Jennifer Cassie's condo complex and was a former maintenance worker there. Chino was one of the workers who did some repairs in Jennifer's condo one week before she disappeared. Detective Wright also found an anonymous crime line tip that was reported during the first week of the investigation that suggested Chino might have been involved in Jennifer's disappearance. When Detective Wright found Chino, he was serving time for a statutory rape charge. On March 18, 2009, Wright interviewed Chino in prison and asked him about the time he worked in Jennifer's condo. Chino said Jennifer let him inside her condo. Everything was normal. Chino also told him, I don't have any idea what happened to her. That day, Chino took a polygraph test and he passed. That was suggested that whoever it was knew how to cover their tracks. Um, could we have a serial killer that was passing through the area? That's another thought that was tossed around. Could she be human trafficked? It, they would have to be forced against their will, I mean, and then drugged and 
Usually it's, it's someone who's a runaway, a throwaway Despite child. the passage of time, the family remains determined to bring closure to the case and get justice for Jennifer. Her father believes she has been trafficked. On March 21, 2019, the parents of Jennifer Cassie settled a lawsuit against the Orlando Police Department, allowing the family to take over the case. This lawsuit was filed in 2018, asking the court to allow a private investigator to obtain the Orlando Police Department's records on the case. The family reportedly paid over $18,000 for the unredacted records. The evidence photos available from the records suggest that a violent struggle took place on the front hood of Cassie's car. Drew Cassie, the father of Jennifer, said, it looked like someone was thrown down on the top of the hood, arms spread out, and then dragged back almost like off the hood to the point where you can almost see fingers scribbling down the hood. The private investigator also added that the photos look suspicious and appear to be a hand mark going across the hood. Despite their efforts, the investigation has not answered anything regarding Jennifer's whereabouts yet. Her case remains open and active, and the authorities continue to seek any information that can bring closure to her family and friends and bring her home safely. On December 9, 2022, Jennifer's family announced that the Florida Department of Law Enforcement's Cold Case Unit will take over the case. The FLD investigators will restart the investigation and review the evidence. This new move comes after her parents worked for six months to convince the Attorney General's office to help them. Who sitting here today is in charge of finding your daughter? Joyce and I. Right. There is no legal, there is no police department that has Jennifer's case. By contract. Jennifer Cassie's disappearance is a mystery that shocked the community and left her loved ones in an unending search for answers. The investigation into Jennifer's disappearance has been ongoing for years, with no significant leads or suspects. Despite this, the Cassie family has not given up hope and continues to work with the police to find answers. They have set up a website and social media accounts to keep the public informed about the case and have offered a reward for any information leading to Jennifer's whereabouts. Jennifer's disappearance has deeply affected her loved ones, who describe her as a kind, responsible, and ambitious young woman with a bright future ahead of her. They continue to hold out hope that one day they will be reunited with her and that her case will be solved. The public's help is still needed in this case, and any information, no matter how small, could be the key to bringing closure and peace to the Cassie family and the community.